Welcome to episode number 25, the quarter century episode of the Camera Shake podcast, the podcast where we talk about everything and anything that's got anything to do with photography, videography, making photos, making videos, and everything that's got anything to do with any of that. So 25 is 25. My age. Yeah, see if... <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so if we'd released one uh, podcast episode a year, then, you know, it would have taken us a quarter century yeah. uh, to do this as it happens, it's only taken us like six months. Yeah, not bad. It's not, not bad, eh? Yeah, yeah. 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 I can't wait to get to 100. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. So with episode 100, what we should do is we should invite all of our guests for mm -hmm. a massive party and piss up. Okay. That's what we should do. Yeah, well, let's make sure it doesn't happen in the next six months. <laughs> and uh, well, I'm, but I'm it would, allowed. Yeah, it would take us two years to get there at the current pace. Yeah, we'll, make, yeah, we'll get there. No, we'll get there. Um, yeah, hopefully we'll be out of the current situation because uh, new restrictions announced today. Yeah, so again, for those of you who um, who listen to or view uh, this episode on the Thursday when it actually comes out, we're, of course, we're recording on a Monday, which means that um, we would have just listened to the latest um, UK restrictions that have been announced. So for the time being, it sounds like we can carry on podcasting in the same room. For now. I think that's now. what it is, right? Yeah. I haven't mm. looked at what um, tier we fall into, but I think it's the mm. the lowest of the tiers. Right. So happy with so that. That's not, that's not too bad. So the UK government just announced uh, a three-tier system. Um, and uh, what that means is that if you're in the lowest tier, then things pretty much carry on as they were. Mm -hmm. um, if you're in the the middle tier, which is... Called the high, is it called high? Uh, yes, medium high and very high. Yeah, medium high and very high. So if you're in the high risk um, tier, then it means uh, a lot of things stop. <laughs> you mm. can't meet. Uh, I think you said you can't meet indoors with people outside your household. Right. Um, there may be some more restrictions on um, sort of restaurants and whatnot. I think I, yeah. I forget exactly what you said. Well, that basically for us, that would mean we would have to go back to uh, podcasting from home, really. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then the highest risk um, yeah. tier would be basically well, it's pretty much lockdown. What I didn't hear was um, what defines those categories. You know, where is the tipping point? Where's the threshold? You know, per cases per mm. yeah, you know, whatever that number is. I don't yeah, know what so it is. if if you are listening to this on Thursday um, or the after, then you probably know all this already. We're a, oh, yeah, a little bit in the dark, <laughs> so you know. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's the latest news. What else has been happening this week? Um, I've still been quite ill. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? Yeah. It's lasted that long. Um, but I got better. And, uh, you know, I can, you can probably still hear it in my throat a little mm. bit. Uh, I don't have that sultry voice that you had when you uh, were uh, ill. <laughs> or the nasal voice. You were the, no, sorry, yes. Oh, yeah, you were in the <laughs> film trailers. That's yeah. right, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, getting over that. Um, but we went out and did a, another car shoot this week, which was great. Yeah. Um, we're kind of becoming car photographers. <laughs> I know. Which was not expected a few months ago. Yeah, taking the automotive photography world by storm. Yeah. I think it's... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> or, or not. Yeah, yeah, or were. not. Not just yet. But And what was it we did? On. We did a, a VW um, uh, um, Amarok? Amarok. Yeah, pickup. Pick VW truck. is pickup truck, yeah. essentially. Um, yeah, it was cool. It was, very, uh, it was a cool car. Yeah. You know, really cool car. A um, lot of chrome. Um, and it was super fun. And what was really fun this time was that we actually had the car to drive for the whole weekend. Mm. Yeah. So um, that doesn't usually happen. No. But uh, it meant that we could get used to the car itself and just, you know, get a really good idea as to how it would potentially photograph. Um, it was black. Yeah. Of course, some... Additional challenges, didn't it? Yeah. So the one, the one thing that we have learned in our quest to become the greatest light painters there there is, um, is so what we've learned is that black cars are difficult. Black cars to are very them. hard. So really, it's uh, you know, it really it boils down to the color, by not. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we came up with a pretty decent result. I mean, it's looked great. Um, mm -hmm. Off we well we tried two locations in the end didn't we? Mm. And the first location was, was cold. much harder. Oh and God, God, it was cold, cold, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I have gloves, so yeah. Well, <laughs> um, I wasn't equipped for that. No, no. <laughs> I wasn't quite ready for that. No. To be honest, it was, um, it was rainy and windy, and ah, there was all sorts yeah, yeah. of wrong. 
But our first location um, would have been a good location, although it's just a bit too dark. So the background mm -hmm. was not looking its best. And then the, if we had we had a lighter color car, it might have worked out okay. But it just would yeah. have looked like it was on a completely black background because it was yeah. that dark. Um, but the second location was cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was very, very cool. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the issues uh, we had was really just timing. Um, so that first location was uh, like a car park type of an area. Um, and it would have been good if the people who owned the car that was blocking our angle <laughs> had turned up 10, 15 minutes before they actually did. Yep, would have been amazing. Uh, and then we would have had, you know, the, that would have been perfect timing because we would have just caught, you know, the right amount of color and detail in the sky because this guy actually looked pretty good. It I did. Mean, it, it, you know, it could have been perfect. Um, and the location itself was sound and with a little bit more residual light, mm -hmm. um, I think it would have been better but you know you live and you learn i mean that was, that was definitely a lesson um a lesson learned yeah um yeah. and i'm saying this before i've actually edited the image so <laughs> yeah you know we'll see we'll see what the end result is uh, it might be awesome or it might not be but um, in any event the actual shoot itself was tricky for that reason mm -hmm. um you know it was cold wet um but also you know it was just i, th I felt it was just a tad too late yeah um, like 15 yeah. minutes would have done it. But the second location was another car park, um, but this time it was lit. Yeah, there's a lot more ambient light around because um, the car park had, um, I think it had a field one side and it had like uh, you know, tennis courts or football courts, some, yeah. something like that, the other yeah. side. And then the car park itself had kind of floodlights, or, not floodlights, but, you know, those kind of lights are, you know, all, all around the place. Mm -hmm. So actually the ambient light in the area was significantly higher. Yeah. Not so much that it was bright. No, it, it wasn't. just enough to light, light up the area. Yeah, it wasn't daytime conditions or anything. But, <laughs> no, you know. no, not quite. But um, so it just um, it just worked just a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. So I think, you know, after every shoot like this, it's, you know, it's important to, um, to really just assess um, the shoot itself and what happened and um, it's to, you know, you kind of, you just reassess and you think about what went well and what, you know, could, what you could improve on and mm -hmm. um, things that you didn't anticipate and, uh, and then had to deal with afterwards. Um, and so I think from, as far as the learning experience is concerned, that um, this particular shoot actually worked really quite well. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, also the fact that we had enough time to create two images at two different locations with this car that really, um, I, th I thought it was really helpful. Yeah. You know, generally what happens is you essentially have one shot at it. There's one location, there's limited time because, you know, either the owner of the car is there or you have to return it, you know, super quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, um, but yeah, so this, this was good. We've got quite a few new cars lined up as well over the next few there weeks. There are so a few, aren't there? Yeah. I'm surprised how many are kind of coming our way so quickly. I know. Yeah. That's really good. Um, so that's, you know, that's promising to be fun. Yeah. Um, Haven't we got one down in down on the coast somewhere? Yeah. There is, gonna, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, we're not going to... That sort of way, yeah. We're not going to give too much away because it should be a really cool car. I'm looking forward to that. That is going to be... Oh, that's right. It is that car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That is a cool car. <clears throat> so... Interesting colour. Yes, interesting colour, uh, but a great car. Mm -hmm. you know, Absolutely. That. So um, that should be really cool. Um and there's a whole bunch of other uh, well, really interesting cars, mm -hmm. you know, we've got lined up. So, you know, watch the space. So I'm yeah, saying. Definitely. So um, definitely more, more of that later. It yeah. just, you know, keeps us busy. Yeah. Oh yeah. So absolutely. That's cool. Buy yourself some gloves, man. Yeah. Fingerless gloves. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I, it's such an odd problem to run into, mm. but it's happened every single time now because the buttons on the back of uh, the D750 I've been using to take these shots. Ah. <laughs> Don't have any kind of, light. you know, lights or oh. have any kind of texture on them to so you know which <clears> button <throat> you're on. Yeah. What a nightmare. Never have I missed lit buttons on a on the back of a camera body as much as in, in this. <laughs> I mean, because you never, really I mean, I never think of that when I, when I shoot in the studio or in a, you know, or even, even in a concert venue, I don't have that problem. Because it's always no. enough light so you can yep. see what's actually happening. 
Um, but especially shooting in that first location where it was literally pitch black at one yeah. point, um, I really couldn't see the back of the camera at all. You should have seen my trainers afterwards because I couldn't see the puddles that were knocking around either. You, you should have seen the inside of the car afterwards. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, I'm um, sure it, he was happy about that. Uh, Oops. Sorry. It was, yeah. um, it was you know, it was, it, was, it was cool. So, yeah, great car to drive for the weekend. It was really good fun. Yeah. And um, and also, yeah, really fun car to, to yeah, photograph. Totally, man. So that's uh, those were our... Um, escapades. Car escapades. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So what else is new this week? Oh, one of our listeners got in touch. Mm. Yes. So big shout out to Chris Matthews in Marengo, Illinois. Marengo. There you go, Marengo. And apparently that is how you pronounce it. It is. It is. Huh? Yeah, man. It's cool. Yeah. So... Chris, thank you very much for getting in touch. Um, obviously, we hope you uh, enjoy the show, and um, you know, thanks for writing in. Again, if you're if you're listening to this show um, out there, you know, no matter where you are, let us know. Well, let us know where you are, and you could just uh, drop us a Facebook message on facebook.com forward slash camera shake podcast, or send us an email. You know that old fangled communication device called email. Does anybody still use that? I still, I still call it electronic mail. Oh, really? Yes. Electronic mail. Oh, yes. Yes. So you can uh, reach us on the electronic mail um, at uh, camerashakepodcast at gmail.com. You will need to connect to the World Wide Web. Who? Oh, the interweb. The interweb. As they call it these days. Yes. Do you remember dial-up? I do remember dial-up, yeah. You're having to connect, to, deliberately connect to the internet and go, ah, ka-ka-ta, ka-ta-ka-ta. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, 56K dial-up. 56.1? Oh, what, yeah, whatever it was. Was Ooh. it? You had the fast connection. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 It was, uh, that was. I also, I also remember um, when we first had broadband. I mean, this goes back a long time. I mean, it may sound like, although we're in the UK, you know, we, we have actually had broadband for a very long time. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember when we first got broadband in the little village that we used to live at, like out in the, you know, out in the prairie. Um <laughs> Were fast internet connections. Did you live in a little house by any chance? Very tiny, <laughs> tiny little house, tiny little house. But um, when we first had broadband, it was just you know, it was terrible even back then. Um, but it was the fastest connection you could get out in the prairie. And uh, and literally, if we wanted to, I think I've, I've probably spoken about this before. But if we had um, if we wanted to watch a movie or download a movie from iTunes, and iTunes, so we decided, okay, well, tonight we're going to watch this movie. We would have to start the download in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's how slow it was. Wow. Yeah, I know. Crazy. That's no good. I know. I was on half a meg for the longest time. Yeah. And and now, uh, oh, I don't even know what I get. 200? Two, oh, oh no, average about 220. Right. Down. Yeah. I've, I've no idea. I've completely forgotten. <laughs> it's more. I know what yours is. I, I shouldn't, but I do know what yours is. It's about three ten. Oh yeah, because we talked about this the other yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you made me actually measure it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I That's more for upload reasons. So I want a faster upload. Oh, which reminds me, I know where I can go and get like a hundred meg upload. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, I do. Where? It's a um, hotel come bar in uh, Bracknell. Really? Yeah, a place that I gig at or used to gig at or before all of this happened. Okay. And uh, they have like the same up speed as they do down. Oh, wow. So okay. I might take my laptop up there, head into the bar, have a drink and just upload. Sounds like a plan. How far is Bregnell? To, uh, 25 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, not far. Awesome. Sounds good. Yeah. As long as bars are still open, you know, that's, uh, that's a, oh, risk. Well, there there's is, a risk involved there. There is that. Yeah, there is <laughs> that. Mm. Yeah, very, very true. Very, very Ooh. true. How do we get on since internet speeds? Oh, downloading film 56. Oh. Yeah, oh, I don't know. dial up broadband, the good old days. Yes. Not dial up broadband, dial up internet, the good old days. Dial up broadband. You know, when I first, actually, here's the thing. So when I first, um, when I lived in that village and um, I remember um, getting our first, well, dial up internet connection, it was through a provider called, I think, the free internet or something like that, which obviously doesn't exist anymore, but it did back then. And they had this, promotion running that the first year of internet would be totally free wow so you had like a year's free dial-up and then after that they started to bring in like different mm -hmm. you know tariffs or whatnot and you had to stop paying for it but and then everybody changed to something else that was cheaper but for a year free internet although i mean albeit it was you know dialed up and it was the connection was shady but 
but hey, it was free. So that was when you used to have caps as well on what you could use. Yeah, oh yeah. God, oh, imagine that. Oh, and that's with the you know the lofty days of Napster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Lars Ulrich. Yeah, thanks, Metallica. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Oh dear. But, oh dear. Yeah, yeah, those were the days. Was in days. Was in days. Well, yeah. speaking of music, tragedy happened this week. Yeah, absolute tragedy. Mm. It's true tragedy. Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, yeah. not yeah. good. Well, big shocker. Um, you know, as a well, as a as a guitar player for, for myself, that's mm-hmm. it was just that was really devastating news. Yeah, um, because I literally, I mean, not only did I grow up with Van Halen or listening to Van Halen, you know. Um, but also, you know, when I was a kid, I used to stripe my guitars <laughs> and all the rest of it. So, you know, it was a big, big thing. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was uh, quite. A, well, it was a you know, it's a shock no matter what. But you know, I think he's. Uh, I don't think he's been well for quite a while, right? Mm. Um, so it wasn't a shock in that sense, but not good. He was still so young. Yeah, sixty-five. Yeah, no age these days. Yeah. Uh, why didn't we draw him a pension then? <laughs> yeah, probably not. No, you know, that'll probably yeah. be 80 by the time we get there. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of these things that always makes, you know, makes you, uh, first of all, it makes you kind of feel kind of old. Mm-hmm. You know, is this one thing, but but also it's um, it's just like a part of your childhood that's died. Yeah. You know, it's just kind of how I feel. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, And there'll definitely never be another Van Halen record, you know, it's the... Oh, that's weird. I hadn't really thought of that. Yeah, that's that's the thing. <laughs> yeah. There's definitely never going to be another Eddie Van Halen solo. Mm. You know, okay. And all the rest of it. So that's... <clears throat> that is uh, sad news. Somber news, indeed. Yeah. Let's talk about something a bit more upbeat. Um, upbeat. Nikon. No, that's always downbeat. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? No, no, not this week. Well, this week we have two bits of Nikon news. Two? Really? Yeah, two. Yes. I know one. Or so Nikon announced, well, Nikon rumors, not, not, it's not an official announcement, but Nikon rumors have basically come out with um, the rumored Z9 or Z9. Yeah. Is it Z or Z? Like, it's, I'm still not sure about that. We're in England. It's it's Z. Right. Right. But I'm not English, so I can, I can say Z. I don't think you'd say, would you say Z in, in Germany? I don't know. Um, we definitely don't it's say. Got to be, isn't it? We definitely don't say ZZ top. <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> ZZ Top. ZZ Top. Uh, Ian, have you listened to, to the latest ZZ Top album? <laughs> oh, dear. That's such a much better name. <laughs> it sounds so rubbish. <laughs> God, imagine that. I know. Oh, ZZ Top. Oh. <laughs> well, you know. Amazing. So, uh, yeah, so I'm still, I'm still not sure what the correct pronunciation is i'm going z9 right cool well i'm going for, i'm going with uh, z9 then so in, in that way you know at least we cover we're covering it all agreed so no matter who's listening whether you're in the uk or whether you're in north america or abroad or wherever you are um again get in touch because uh, it's it's uh, super fun to find mm. out where people are oh yeah um this is like our, our latest game i think mm. um but uh, yeah so the z9 sounds like a really good camera yeah. I mean, it sounds like an awesome camera. It really does. When you really look at the specs, it's like, <gasps> you know. Well, the specs, are, they're punting out there, um, assuming they're accurate right now. Who knows? Uh, okay, but, well, um, I mean, you know, yeah. Seem to be pretty much in line with what the Sony A9 Mark, well, A9 Mark II, yep. I guess, or whatever it would be. Yeah. Um, very, same, right in the same ballpark. So really, um, what... Nikon rumors come out with is a spec list um, that looks very much like the Z9 is going to be the flagship camera. So it's going to be like the D6, mm. like the mirrorless version of the D6, if you want to call it that. Um, and that means a 45 megapixel sensor, um, 20 frames per second, um, 8K at at 30 frames mm-hmm. per second video. Yep. Um, you know, it, it looks like Oh, and potentially even a built-in grip. Built-in grip? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, very much like the D6. You know? hmm. um, so literally, it could be, and this is really only based on Nikon rumors, but Nikon rumors are really quite a reliable source of rumors yeah. or have yeah. proven to be. So 
you know, I don't really have any reason to doubt that. Although, um, I would say that probably, you know, the exact specs, I mean, this could change between now and then because it is rumored to be released in fall 2021. Mm -hmm. So that's still a good year from now. And I think what I've read is, is that it, it appears as though Nikon are planning on testing this camera at the Tokyo Olympics next summer. Okay. You know, um, now uh, w what's also rumored is that it would have um, it would have the, the sort of the image quality of the R5 and the autofocus capability of the Sony A9 Mark II. So if all of that's true, then that's sounding pretty good. I find the autofocus hard to believe. <laughs> well, I'm if they of... finally up their game on it, then great. That's amazing. Yeah, true. I mean, generally speaking, I think, um, especially in video, of course, uh, the autofocus um, on the um, on the Z six and Z seven, that's actually a marked repro uh, mm -hmm. improvement mm -hmm. from anything that's that Nikon's brought up before. And you know, let's not forget, just because it's not quite at the same level as you know Canon's uh, dual pixel autofocus or um, or, or Sony's A seven, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, mm -hmm. Or a nine video autofocus, just because it's not quite a hundred percent, that doesn't make it bad. No, it's still an incredible improvement on anything that Nikon's brought up before, especially when it comes to video. Like take the D seven hundred and fifty or even the D eight hundred and fifty. You know, I mean, the autofocus in video is rubbish, <laughs> but I can't even I can't put it. It's garbage for those of you in North America. I mean, honestly, it is <laughs> pathetic. You know, it's I can't even. There's no other superlative that I could possibly use to describe that autofocus. It's just trash, <laughs> right? Um, in this day and age, I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. You know, and that's but you know that's in a camera where actually the the still autofocus, like when when you're using the camera as a you know as a stills camera, the autofocus is pretty damn good. I mean, mm -hmm. this this really you know again nothing to complain about. It's just the video part of it that's that's um, that's not particularly good, but. Again, in the Z6 and the Z7. And by the way, the Z6 II and the Z6 VII are being announced two days from now. So if you're watching this on Thursday, that was yesterday. So um, in two days from now, I'm going to be getting my, my butt out of bed at 5 o'clock in the morning to watch that um, announcement. And uh, I can only assume that most likely there are going to be improvements to the autofocus again. I mean, I mean in fact, I know already that there's <coughs> certain that have made certain improvements to it. So if all of that's true, coming back to the Z9, if all of that's true and we've got an autofocus that's on par with, you know, yeah. the Sony A9 um, and everything else, then, yeah. It's quite a comeback. It's quite a comeback. Now, the pro problem is, is the price. Well, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll come on to that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, is whether they, how many customers they lose before <clears throat> that comes out. Well, they may not, but they're so far behind right now that maybe they'll lose so many customers that they won't come. They, they, well, I think it's it, enough, but mm. I think it will be enough. It will be enough. I think people will hold out for that. Well, I mean, I've already heard from, from speaking to some people, you know, some, uh, some Nikon shooters who were uh, actively considering moving and some who have recently recently over the last or have moved away from Nikon over the last year or two um that this really looks like a you know it looks like a serious mm -hmm. contender um I mean this I think we always have to look at that in context of what else is going on if we're looking at the rumored specs of the a of the z9 now right in October 2020 it looks awesome it looks awesome against the R5, Canon R5 right now, and you know everything that's that Sony's got on the table right now. But then that camera's coming out in a year, a year's time from now. Yeah, and everybody's going to have moved on between now and then. Mm -hmm. So we'll really have to see, you know, what what the situation is in October or in in fall, twenty twenty one. You know, you know, will there be revisions to Canon's lineup by that point as well? Well, so Canon are. Um, but aren't they already doing it? Well, Canon are apparently um, 
planning the uh, th- what is it? The Ken R five S, which is which is supposed to be the uh, the Canon flagship mirrorless flagship model. Um, that's been rumored to have a ninety megapixel um, oh, sensor. That's right. Yeah. So, and of course, I mean, this may it may sound like okay. Well, that's twice as twice as much twice as many pixels as a forty five megapixel in the uh, in the Z nine. But they are very different. These could be very different cameras. Um, so, you know, and uh, and I like I like a comment that I've, that I've heard the other day on on a on another podcast where you know it's like. You know, with the podcast also said, oh, I know why, you know, I can tell you exactly why you don't need 90 megapixels. It's because you don't have it already. <laughs> and it's kind of, it's true. You know, I mean, I can't really, I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the camp of photographers, you know, where, where I say like, well, you know, I, you know, 45 megapixels or 90 megapixels doesn't, other than the file size is going to be twice as large probably, it doesn't really make that much of a difference to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I'll be absolutely fine with 45 megapixels. Not a problem. I can do anything that I do and more with 45 megapixels. No doubt. Yeah. You know? So do I need 90? No, I don't. Um, the only thing that worries me about the Z9 is a little bit is the price tag. Yeah, let's get on to that. Yeah, so the price tag at the moment is rumored to be between six and seven thousand mm-hmm. dollars. And that may be a bit of a shocker, but actually, when you look at the current Nikon flagship, the D6, if you look at that, you know, that's around about the sort of six thousand mark, give or take. So it's really the same kind of price bracket. Um and again, I think the idea here is to really establish that new flagship model. Because remember, DSLR technology is on the way out. It is. There's not going to be another. There's not going to be a D7. No, ever. So, you know. And you know, on one hand, you can go, yep, you know, it's similarly priced um, to the current flagship. However, mm. it's still going to be about a thousand dollars more than. Or apparently more than the A9 that's going to come out, mm. which is all, and that is already about a thousand dollars more than the R5. Five. Although the R5S may very well be in this in in a similar kind of price bracket. Could well so. be. Could well be. So, yeah. I mean, it's all a guessing game at the moment, but yeah. it seems like they're pushing for a similarly spec'd machine. Feels like it's overpriced in comparison to what's <clears throat> currently there. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. You know, it's uh, or, or maybe it's just basically saying like, look, we're you know, we're going to be dishing you up a camera body that is worth that money if that's yeah. what's going to happen. So, so this is definitely. I mean, this is interesting news. It's interesting news also because um, there's been a dry spell when it comes to Nikon news ever since we started the podcast. Mm, yeah, and um, it's you know, it's noticeable that. That there's all of a sudden there's a lot of news coming out, um, which seems like around about the same time. So, you know, interesting times. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's see what the next twelve months brings. Hmm. It's going to be cool, though. Yeah, it's going to be very cool. Exactly. So, but the Z9 is not the only bit of Nikon news. Yes, you said there was two. Yes. Yeah, so the, so Nikon have also announced um, that they are starting the Nikon Yellow program again uh-huh. um, for the Z5. And so if you uh, cast your mind back to last year, um, Nikon started the the, uh, the Yellow program uh, for the Z50. So when the Z50 came out, they basically said, okay, you can have the Z50 for 30 days. You can try it out. And if you don't like it, you can return it for free and you don't pay a penny. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think they even included the, you know, reverse charge envelope, whatever you call it, um, return envelope. So that's kind of, that's a pretty good idea if you think about it, because what it means is like you, you get to use the camera for 30 days, make up your mind, you know, and, you, and if you really like it, then you can buy it. But if you don't like it, you just send it back. Yeah. And that's really putting a lot of trust into your customers. And also it's putting a lot of trust into your into your gear or into your products because it basically means that like I know we can convince you if 
if you only get it in your hands, if you only try it, we know we're gonna, yeah. you're going to love it, basically. It's clever marketing, really, because, you know, the majority of people who end up with a brand spanking new camera in their hands mm. yeah. will very rarely want to let it go. Sure, and it is, I mean, it's a killer camera. Again, in comparison, you know, if you think about, if you think about it, really, I mean, it's, you know, for anybody, that'd be a cool camera. Yeah. Although, having... Uh, having chatted with uh, with our listener Chris uh, over the last week, who originally uh, bought a Z50, he made a very interesting comment because he said um, he had a Z50, um, but then he sold that and uh, moved on to the Z5 because he felt that a Z50 was just too small in his hands. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting thing because that's um, it's an ergonomics issue to a point, but also of course the Z50 is the uh, the APS-C crop sensor version right and uh, naturally they're always a little bit smaller i mean traditionally they've always been just a slightly s- smaller okay. um, form factor than than the um you know full full size sensors so so yeah so that's i'm, I'm wondering whether whether more people have felt that originally mm. um but in any event now i can start the same program the yellow program for the z5 and I think that's a really cool move. It's a great move. Except. Ah, there's always a but, isn't there? But yeah. it's only available for customers in the US. Ah, great. So good that's, for them. But well, yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's a good start. Um I'm hoping that, you know, there may be other Nikon subsidiaries around the world that will you know, take a leaf out of Nikon USA's book and uh, start the same program. It makes perfect sense to me. I don't really see why. Um, it shouldn't be. I mean, I want to think that um, the program itself was successful with the Z50 because why? Why would they otherwise? Absolutely. You know, rekindle that. Yeah. Um, so, and if that's something that's worked in the United States, I don't really see why that wouldn't work uh, over here in the UK or in Australia or anywhere else. So, yeah. you know, uh, maybe Nikon. maybe they'll do it. Maybe if anybody will. at Nikon watches this program, uh, please make this uh, or this show. May, please make this program. The yellow program available in the UK because uh, yeah, that'd be good. Yeah, because I would, I would definitely, I would check out the. Well, would I check out the Z five? If they if they had the same program for the Z six or Z seven two, then yes, absolutely, I'd be on that. I feel more appropriate for, for you, sure. Right? Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, it'd be great actually. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Because you know, it's especially in these times, it's actually difficult to get your hands onto a camera body. You can check them out online. You can even go into a store and look at them. But actually, having them in your hand is, for, for obvious reasons, is difficult. Yeah. Now, I remember um, going into my my local camera store, and, and I, I feel I'm lucky that we have a local camera store, even still, you know. Um, but of course, you know, typically when you walk into that store, it's a really, really great store um, called SRS. It's uh, it's a family run store. They've been there for like decades. Um, no, they're really friendly. Normally you walk in, you can pretty much touch anything. You can talk to somebody, somebody gives you a camera, you can try it out, you know, da, da, da. Um, and it's kind of part of what it's, what it should be like. You know, it's part of what it's supposed to be like when you mm. go into a camera mm. store like that. And of course now everything's, you know, there's plexiglass everywhere, there's screens everywhere. You can't, you can't touch anything. You can only walk into the, um, the area in front of the counter. Um, and then you've got to speak to somebody and they'll show you something behind a piece of glass, <laughs> you know, and, and, I mean, and right now it's about the best they can do. Isn't yeah, it? exactly. Right. Mm-hmm. It's the best they can do. And I'm, you know, um, and I, I'm happy that they're open and I'm happy that you can actually go there, mm. you know, but, um, but it's just not the same as holding yeah. something in your hand and feeling it and, you know, um, and working out whether it actually fits into your hand because there's no way I can tell that from a photograph. No, it's true. Yeah. It's very, very true. You can only get comparisons. Oh, it's similar to yeah. this. It's very different to exactly. that. And if you remember, like originally, um, Sony, when they first came onto the market uh, for the first few years, they had real issues with the ergonomics of the cameras because people tended to not like them. They mm. didn't like the way that they felt when you picked them up. You know, it made your fingers feel stiff once you've held them for a while because there was nothing really to hold on to. Yeah. The one thing that Nikon, especially Nikon, and also Canon have done really well over the last decades is that they've got the ergonomics right. It just feels good to hold that camera yeah. in your hand. It just fits into your palm. It fits into your hand. Um, 
all the buttons. They've they've done this for such a long time that they now really know where these buttons should be. So you know you're not doing like finger acrobatics, mm-hmm. you know, to mm-hmm. push a particular button. Um, but that was also the main complaint initially, where especially with Sony bodies was just it just didn't feel yeah good, you know. And that's that was I guess that was one of the reasons why a lot of people waited until they moved. A lot's happened since then, and Sony bodies now are a lot more ergonomic yeah. than they used to. And I've heard people say that they really like them. So, you know. Yeah. It's it's cool I mean, thing. we're not far off 2022 and this stuff should be a given, right? But it's not. Yeah. It takes time. That's it does it. take time. That's it. Um, but, you know, family-run business there, is it, how have they fared over the last few months? Are they uh, surviving, do you think? <clears throat> well, I don't really know because I haven't really spoken to them about it. It might okay. be an interesting topic to, um, to touch upon. But, um, you know, they have... They're probably one of the largest camera stores in the area. Mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. fact, with the exception of uh, certain chains, um, they're really the only big multi-brand camera store uh, in the area that I know of, mm-hmm. right? Um, and they also run, you know, their website is quite um, extensive. So they, you know, they're doing a lot of uh, online sales and so on and so forth. So um yeah i mean it's you know it's a really it's a great store yeah you know, it'd be a shame if that went yeah. yeah um because i do like i like going in there like trying things out um and i actually purchase a lot of stuff in the store as well mm. you know it's there's always something i feel is important to support you know sometimes only little things like a battery or you know i don't know like what was that by the other day um a polarizer filter Oh, okay. yeah, you know, yeah. and then a filter pouch or something like that. You know what I mean? I mean, it's like little. I mean, they're not, you know, not spending thousands and thousands of pounds in there every time I go there. They actually, it's funny, funny little fact, fun fact, right? Um, they have a special chair for the wives. <laughs> yep. So when you come in, <laughs> they know exactly the wife's going to be bored. <laughs> you know, or the husband, if you're a female photographer and you have a husband who's not a photography, I'm pretty sure your husband's going to be bored too. Let's face it. So they have. Um, a chair there, like a really nice kind of chair and a table that you can, you know, where you can just hang out and chill out and, and let your other half nerd out for a bit, <laughs> fall asleep, you know. And um, and that's it. There's also there's a Wenzel, which is like a bakery chain, um, next door. And so what happens is when um, yeah. when we in the past pre COVID when we've gone into town, um, you know, as a family, like my daughter would always go to Wenzel's and get like some. I like croissant or something like that or pretzel or whatnot. And then they would sit in the in that seating area whilst <laughs> mm-hmm. I'd, you know, be looking through, I don't know, all sorts of different camera gear and whatever. Love it. Love so it. yeah. Oh, what do you have to say pretzel for? I'm hungry. <clears throat> yeah. <sighs> True pizza. Should we break and have some food? <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, so anyway, so you know, if you do have a local camera store, I mean this is all right, so here's a serious appeal. If you are listening, um, let us know if there's if there still is a local camera store in your area, because what I've noticed over here in the UK, and I've sort of been hearing that from friends um, over in Canada and um, in, in the states as well, is that local camera stores really seem to be disappearing mm-hmm. very rapidly, um, and I'm concerned that with everything that. I no. feel like we're about to have the same outtake. <laughs> <in there. laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, hang on. You have the most annoying vibrate on your phone. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yeah, you're on camera again. <laughs> it's like you're you're the you're the caller that always calls into every show. Yeah, like a sto- <laughs> like a stalker. You could be the show. You the camera the camera shake podcast stalker. So, in all seriousness, um, let us know. You know, send us an email or uh, you know, hook up with us on uh, on Facebook. Again, it's facebook.com forward shake forward shake forward shake. Forward shake. <laughs> so that would be perfect. Wow. Um, Facebook.com camera shake podcast, um, and just get in touch and let us know if there is, in fact, still a local camera store in your area. Um, that'd be really interesting to know. Yeah, it would. Yeah, it would because it's definitely feels widespread. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I wouldn't, 
uh, I, I really um you know I mean in London yes there are there's a number of um of camera stores in town um, but out here in the in the burps as it were you know I can't really think of anything else no so no we might one day plan a a trip across the North American continent where we'll head from one independent camera store to the next. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Like a, um, <laughs> rather than a man V food. Yeah. It'll be a man V camera. independent camera store. <laughs> <laughs> we'd, we'd have to, you know, we'd have to definitely uh, max out the credit cards. On oh, our, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get a few more as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we could uh, buy a different lens. Ooh, talking about lenses. Mm, yes, right. Let's talk bit, about that. Okay, so we've talked about Nikon for a bit. Let's talk about Canon mm -hmm. um, because Canon are. This is down to Canon rumors, but apparently, um, Canon are planning an onslaught in camera lenses for 2021, mm -hmm. and what they are planning actually really looks really quite exciting. It's extensive. Ex 16 new lenses, yeah. apparently. Um, that's a lot. In, in one year, it seems like, you know. I don't know how they're managing it. It's impressive. It's very impressive, yeah. Very impressive. The full might, the full might of the, you know, large corporation. From, from what I saw, they, you won't be wanting for much more after that, you know, many more options. Um, it, looks, it looks really good. I mean, when we talk, we're talking new lenses, what we actually mean is mirrorless. Yeah. You know. Um, lenses. So we've got everything from everything from the you know fifty mil one point eight nifty fifty type of um, you know the plastic fantastic lens. Um, although this one is supposed to be um, much better in terms of optics, and um, and so you know it, it's a much improved lens. And even the original one point eight nifty fifty was a decent lens. There's nothing wrong with that lens. Yeah. You know, completely. Um, but it's also like. You know, there's like a, a 24 mil prime. There's a 35 mil prime. Um, there's uh, this is 7200 f4, um, which is cool. You know, because here's the thing: when we talk about pro glass, we always think uh, in terms of like, okay, you know, uh, 70 to 200 2.8. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, when do you ever you when, when do you ever shoot at 2.8? Occasionally, but not, <laughs> yeah. Like in a portrait situation, mm -hmm. I never shoot at 2.8. Really ever, I don't. I shoot at 4.5, I shoot at 5.6, you know. So actually, you know, a 72-200 F4 would do the trick for me. The only time I shoot at 2.8 on that lens is at a concert. Low light, right? Low light, exactly. So that's the only thing. So if you don't shoot concerts, I think you're probably going to be fine with an F4. Um, it's likely that with the 72200 2.8, the optics may be better quality. So you may, you know, it may be generally a slightly better quality lens. Having said that, um, the price tag is going to be very different. Significant, right? Significant, yes. So, you know, you get a kind of balance. It's probably half as much as again, half as much, ugh, can't get my words out, half as much again, isn't it? Most likely, yeah, yeah. If not more. Yeah, so there was no, um, there was no um, hint as to what, you know, what, what the prices were for these new lenses. It was just simply a list of 16 uh, potential lenses. There were a lot of long lenses in there, you know, uh, 400, 600, 800, 1200 lens, uh, millimeter lenses. Sounds great. You know, if you're, um, you know, if you're into wildlife photography, for example, sounds like that's a great range of lenses mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Um, or even possibly if you're a sports photographer, for example, you know, you need to really get in there. Um, fantastic. So, oh, there's also um, a 100 mil macro. That's right. 2.8, in yeah. fact. That sounds very interesting. Again, that's a really super useful lens. That's very versatile. You can do a lot of stuff there, anything from portrait photography to product photography, for example. It's a great lens. Um, so really, I mean, they, they seem to be covering most of their bases, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and with that lineup of lenses... It really leaves not much left. I mean, whatever that means. <laughs> you know. How does um, how how <laughs> will that compare to um, Nikon's existing lineup for? So, some time ago, Nikon announced a roadmap um, 
for new lens releases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was kind of hotly debated when it first came out because, you know, there were some, there were a lot of choices on there. You kind of go like, oh, man, I mean, that's doesn't make any sense. Like, you know, the, the 0 0.8 or 0 0.9 knocked lens, for example, which is like, you know, at, at, a, at some ridiculous price point that you kind of go, well, there's going to be like three people in the world who's gonna, who are going to yeah. be stupid enough to buy that lens. Um, do you know what I mean? It's like, it wasn't, it wasn't really what photographers wanted, I don't think. You know, because really, from a professional perspective, you're looking for, you know, your working glass. You know, the uh, 14 to 24, mm -hmm. let's say, the 24 to 70, the 70 to 200, you know, a 100 mil lens, an 80 mil lens, or 85, you know, something like that, uh, a 50, 35 prime. That sort of thing is what you're looking for, generally. You have to have that on the menu. You know, this is the first kind of stuff you need to come out. And of course, I realized that pro photography may not necessarily the biggest share of the market. Mm -hmm. you know? True. Um, so of course, you got to be looking at the enthusiast market, you know, and what kind of lenses. Those are the kind of F4 or the variable focal length um, lenses. Um, they are cheaper, you know, more affordable. They don't necessarily, yeah. Okay, in terms of image quality, well, they're obviously not, quite as good as, as pro glass clearly. I mean, it is a difference in quality when you're, when you're spending three times as much on a lens, you know, but, um, the question there is how good is good enough. And these new lenses are much better than their predecessors. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, and again, you can't really say that two years ago, nobody was capable of taking a great photograph because clearly they were, you know, so it's, so really what we're talking about is, is improvement across the range. But I still thought that, uh, that Nikon's roadmap left a lot to, de to be desired, mm. you know, at the time. Mm. So, um, you know, and I'm finding it encouraging that their announcement as far as or announcement announcements, as far as new bodies are concerned. Um, I'm sort of waiting on really, uh, you know, a clear or clearly defined list of lenses. And that's what I was getting at is, you know, you know are they still going to be so far behind that they, they you know, if, if it's the end of 2022 before they've got their range of lenses out to match what Canon's doing. Yeah. So, so Canon are planning to um, release these lenses according to Canon rumors. So this is like, again, um, you know, more of a, more of a rumor thing, but again, it's fairly, they're usually quite reliable. Yeah. Uh, but so it sounds like as if, um, allegedly, Canon are planning on releasing these lenses in 2021. Although it should be said that with the pandemic and everything else that's going on, this may very well get pushed into 2022. Who, you know, at this point, who knows, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. But there's some interesting stuff happening. You know, uh, certainly some exciting kind of news. I think the, the cool thing is, is that everything is everyone is now taking a step forward mm. you know it's probably the biggest advance in in cameras that we've had in years right yeah. and that's great that's nothing but a good thing well exactly the, you know the thing that strikes me really is that um you know now the choice is greater than ever yeah you know years ago yeah. it was nikon or canon i mean this is like i remember when i first joined the, the, like a camera club for instance you know the first question was like what do you shoot nikon or canon mm. and it's like well fuji can't imagine <laughs> yeah. me walking in there and saying Panasonic <laughs> Olympic. <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, there, there are so many great camera systems out there, um, and you can take something like take Fuji for example. Fuji are fantastic, fantastic imagery, fantastic lenses. I like the bodies. I really like the bodies as well. Um, and of course, you can, you can put a working selection of, you know, body and glass together, uh, at a fraction of the price yeah. that you would pay, um, for, for Nikon pro or Canon pro glass, you know, uh, an absolute fraction. And you could, I, I think the results would be very much comparable. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I really don't feel that there's, that there would be that much in it. And it's a real alternative. I mean, now it's the greatest time for that ever really because you have real or people have real alternatives available to them yeah you know 
um, you know, again, whether it's you know Fuji or uh, Sony, Sony Group, well, although Sony, you know, Sony is not cheap either, so it's no, no, they are not. <laughs> so they're really playing up in that price bracket, but uh, but yeah, exciting times. Yeah, really is, and you know, you can choose any of them and take a great photo and take a great video with it, right? Just one one of those brands will resonate with you slightly more than another. Yeah, absolutely. And that that's really all it's going to come down to. <clears throat> and that's it. And, you know, I find that with myself because I'm sort of like, um, you know, I'm invested into Nikon only because I've spent a lot of money on glass and have a lot of money tied up in mm-hmm. Nikon gear, as it were. Um, and from a usage point of view, it's always delivered. You know, I've really had, I found it extremely reliable. It's very reliable gear. Um, literally, you know, their pro glass is bomb proof. Um, I can absolutely see why people like to take that kind of stuff into war zones. You know, um, it's great, great stuff. Um, there's part of me, you know, that thinks like, okay, well, but Fuji bodies look so much cooler. Like they have to, you know, they have this kind of retro mm-hmm. design. I really dig that. I mean, I, I love the way their gear looks um i also like obviously i really like the results i like the colors you know um so i think you know if i had to start over again right now and if somebody said like right here's six grand you know whatever um i i I don't know whether i would invest that into nikon gear now i would possibly look at other options six grand you're like you're only going to get a body for that (laughs) With Nikon, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> but actually, you know, with Fuji, you could probably put a whole kit together. Yeah, you could. So, you know, it's a, it's an interesting thought anyway. Yeah, it really is. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's um, interesting times ahead. Yeah, it really, right it really, really is. And, you know, I talked a couple of weeks ago about that potential move to Sony in due course. Mm-hmm. But now, <laughs> I, you know, I kind of started to think, yeah, that's probably going to be the right move for me and the type of thing that I do and what I want to be able to do with it. Yeah. Um, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm confused you know, again. Yeah, I mean, as you know, I priced up all my gear um, a few weeks ago uh, just to see how much I get for it now if I were to turn it, if I were to sell it, and where that would leave me um, in terms of switching brand. Yeah. Right. And. It just it was just a thought experiment really because I just wanted to see like okay how much money would I have to invest mm-hmm. um, to uh, to do what I do um, but just simply to switch from Nikon to a different mm-hmm. different brand um, and really from a financial point of view it makes more sense to stick with the brand and to change the body and then over time change the lenses. Yeah, you know that, that makes more sense right now. I think um, because yeah, the, the price tag is very high. If you were to you know, if you were to change completely, especially once you have you know a whole collection of of glass, that's yeah, you know, it's not so much of a problem when you have one or two lenses, but you know, once you have yeah. like a whole shelf full of them, then it, you know, it becomes you're more and more invested into that. Yeah, absolutely. Brand. And as much as I don't really like to be tied to a particular brand. You know, um, it is annoying, but it's a cold hard fact. Yeah, <laughs> that you know you've got money tied up in, in that sort of stuff. You know, that's been really. Um, I think what Canon's been doing over the last year or so has been extremely interesting. I mean, it's some you can't fold it. There's some really great stuff they've brought they've put out. You know, the uh, their mirrorless cameras are fantastic. The glass that they're coming out with is great. Um, I think they are really they have. If they haven't overtaken Sony, I've really given Sony a you know a run for the money. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually think they've probably steamed ahead of the game. So, you know, yeah, if if you were if you're new to the whole thing, why would you buy a Canon camera? I don't, well, that's right. You know, I don't know if I ever told you. I, I had a big thing against Canon for years. <laughs> Did you? Yeah, really bad. <laughs> right, it's only okay. in very recent times I've kind of forgiven them. And oh, right, okay. now I'm open to the idea of Canon and it's only because of the, the, the job that I did previously. I had to deal with Canon constantly. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, I dealt with them a lot. And that was all over sort of infringement claims and those type of things, right? Right. And 
they were not the easiest people to deal with at oh, times. Right. Well, in terms of like fake bodies and stuff, and yeah, and um, white, like uh, gray goods. Sorry, oh, right, you know, okay. mm. bodies and lenses um, intended for sale in uh, Asia, the Asian market, mm. but being sold over here, that you know, right. or US in over here, that, those kind of things because they're okay. cheaper. Cool. Right. So if you know where to get some cheap gear, let me know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's none on there anymore. <laughs> yeah, we made sure of that. Um, so yeah, they they were very difficult. So I, I, I've never I never really forgave them for that. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, but I'm over it. I am over it. Yeah. So I'm very open to canon these days. Yeah, yeah. It's funny how that works sometimes, isn't it? In terms of like brand loyalty, mm. like sometimes or or like dislike of a brand. You know, sometimes it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the actual product, no, or the actual right. camera or something. It's, it may just be. Um, something you know bad experience in customer service or whatever absolutely you know that yeah. really turns you off of a brand yeah and um, i find that a lot with um like you know the whole like i don't know like apple versus pc kind of argument you know where somebody, like only the other day i listened to somebody say like oh um i've only had you know i've had a couple of bad um, customer service experiences with apple and that's why i'll never buy an apple ever again yeah and you kind of go okay but it was probably just you know one guy who had a bad day that day it's true, you know. Although I've had that a few times from multiple people, well, I'm just quite thankful I haven't had had to speak to them. Yeah, well, see, I've I've heard that too, maybe, but um, personally, I've only had good experiences. You mm. see, that's uh, I've never really, uh, actually, I've never had a bad customer service experience. I, I even know someone who's had bad tech advice from them that mm. wiped their machine. Oh, really? Effectively, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, that was a happy day. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I should always back up. Well, there is that. Talking about backing up, how's your backup going? It's, oh, shall I explain it? Yeah. It's very geeky and boring, but mm. I don't care. That's what we do, right? So for the longest time, I've been trying to find the cheapest unlimited cloud storage. Right? right. Sounds simple enough. Mm. Settled on a company called, uh, well, their product is called Crash Plan, right? Yeah. Which is great. Does exactly what I want it to do. Mm -hmm. but I basically use it as an archive more than backup because right. I back up locally. Most yeah. of the time, and I use I then back up hard drives with completed projects to crash mm -hmm. plan, and then I can delete them off my hard drives here. So right. I've got the space; I don't have to keep continually buying hard drives. Mm. That's the idea of it. Worked okay, okay, mm -hmm. but it's really slow because I only have servers in the states. So it's oh, it's been really bad. Right. So I also had um, maximum iCloud storage as well. Mm. Fine. All that. And I've been using that for a while. I got to the point where I couldn't handle it anymore. Hmm. And so I started research, doing more research. And every single service that has unlimited storage requires the local copies to be present all the time. As soon as it sees that those local copies aren't there anymore, and you delete them from your external hard drive, for example, right. or you don't connect that hard drive for a month, it marks them for deletion within the next 30 days. Right. And then they're gone. That's it. They're gone. You can't get it back. And it's like, oh, that is the absolute last thing I, I want to happen. So then I remember a friend of mine has had unlimited Google storage, Google Drive storage for mm. the longest time yes. at a really cheap price. It pays like a tenner a month. Mm. It's like, well, I want that. Mm. I've never been able to get it. You can't find it. They change their tiers, all of mm. that kind of stuff. And there's always been this option to contact sales. Right. Okay. So that's what I did. Mm. Because otherwise it was five terabytes, that's all they did. And I, I found videos saying, oh, you, you, can, um, you can contact sales or you get their business version and you can have multiple users. And mm. you, if you have five users, you can get unlimited storage, but that'll cost you $60 mm. a month. And I thought, well, actually, maybe I'm prepared to pay that amount, mm. if that's weird. So I contacted sales and, they, and it's just a form. Mm. You just need to have your own domain. Mm. So you're, you know, you're a business. Mm. And that's it. And they sent me a link. Cool. Clicked on that link, set myself up, mm. took five minutes, mm. clicked on the storage. You have unlimited storage. Yay. Sweet. It cost me £23 a month. Right. But I'm already paying like 20 quid a month mm. for Crash Plan and the iCloud. Right. The iCloud. <laughs> the iCloud. The iCloud. God, I sound really old. <laughs> <laughs> have you got the iCloud? <laughs> oh. So it's only cost me just a few pounds more a month. Yeah. And I've got exactly what i wanted plus it's uploading using my maximum upload speed that i can i can do it out 
There's cool. no throttling. It's not the servers mm. are obviously it's Google. They're everywhere. Mm. And it's still going to take you how long to upload? Well, I've now uploaded in about 48 hours, uh, 520 gig or right, something okay. like that. Cool. Not bad. So the rate you're going is still going to take like months. Well, I've, well, <laughs> I've, I've got, everything. I've got uh, about 10 terabytes I want to upload at the okay. moment. Right. Um, so if we've done 500 gigs in 48 hours, go on, do the math for me. Yeah, 40 days, 40 days of uploading. That's, yeah, 40 uh, days, six weeks, and I should be done of constant uploading. But sure. it's a significant amount of data, really. Yeah. 10 terabytes. Yeah. 10. So you can give us an upload update every week. We'll see where we're at or whether it's Yeah, a little yet. Google countdown. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, no worries. Talking about updates, by the way, how's your bullet journaling going? Um, It fell by the wayside while I was ill. Yeah, right. Mostly because there was nothing to put in it because I wasn't going to do anything because I was feeling so bad. True, yeah. Absolutely. Pretty much. I yeah. thought, well, I'll save the sheets. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I'll save the sheets. Um, so yeah. I started again. Yeah. Uh, just while I was ill. So what was uh, what, what day is it? Like? Monday. Yeah. Yeah. So two weeks, I basically didn't do it. Yeah. And now I'm back on it again. Now yeah, I'm I mean, better. the thing is, it's true. I mean, if, you know, if you're ill, then you've got nothing to yeah. put in it. So it's, it's fine. Yeah. You know, it's the thing. Yeah. Um, generally, yeah. It's um, How are you finding it? <clears throat> Just cool. Generally. I feel uh, whether it's true or not, but I feel more productive. Mm. I feel like I'm not forgetting things that I need to get done and when I need to get them done by. It sounds so basic, but yeah. you know, using general reminders and alarms or whatever it might be, just I would still delay it, you know, for mm. whatever reason. Now it doesn't happen. I think it's you know uh, one of the things that I feel. Uh, when it comes to bullet journey in general, is that actually um, because I have sort of overseeable, you know, achievements or or achievable um, tasks every day, um, I, I don't get into a panic halfway through the week. Yeah, you know, thinking, oh my god, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to do yeah. this or that. The other, it's like literally because it's mapped out so well, I can basically. You make decisions before they happen. I mean, you know, when I realize that uh, I'm not really going to be able to complete all the tasks on that on that day or something, I can move them around mm. and I can mm. kind of plan ahead. Um, and I can make that time the following week, for example, you know, and that's, that's fine. I mean, it really just takes the whole the panicking bit out of it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's how yeah. I feel. I feel like that I'm not really too worried that I won't be able to, to do a thing that I've forgotten something or whatever, or, you know, um, that I won't be able to, get through a day because I've got a million and a half things on, it just evens the whole thing out and you can just, I don't know, it just makes my work-life balance better. Yeah, it it For really does. Word, it really, know, really so. does. And, so. and you know, you, you talked about it um, several times, the, the act of sitting down to write things out mm -hmm. really makes a difference to me. And I didn't yeah. realize how much of an impact it would have, but it does, you know, as soon as I get up in the morning, mm make myself a coffee, hmm. I sit on the sofa and open up yeah. and either update it or see what's going on yeah. today. And, <laughs> and you know, one of the things that is super useful is that when you look back and you think like, okay, you look back at your week and say like, okay, I didn't complete this task on Monday and I didn't complete these two tasks on Tuesday and I didn't complete this thing on Wednesday and stuff. It really makes you think um, about whether these things are really important. Yeah. And a lot of the time you kind of go, well, do you know what? I don't have to do that. That's actually not important at all. And, and again, it just gives you that sense of oversight mm -hmm. over things, mm. you know, um, which again, I find out it's, it's a really, one of the biggest um, positives for me in that, you know, in, in sticking with, with the sort of system of like organizing your day or your week or your month, for instance, it's just that it just, you know, it feels like there's a lot less hassle yeah. involved. I've also learned through doing this, I mean, bullet journaling really, it's, it's often said it's sort of an analog thing in an otherwise digital world sort of a thing. Because you could, I mean, there's an argument that you could organize your day in like your iCal or, you know, Google Calendar or Outlook Calendar or whatever, and you could use X, Y, Z app to organize workflows. And you can do all of that. And that's all cool, you know, if, if that's how you swing, essentially. But... What I've found is, is that I ended up with 
you know, tons of reminders popping up left, right, and center. Oh, There's yeah. one thing reminding you to do one thing, and then it's another thing, and another thing, and another thing. And actually, it just drives you nuts. I mean, yeah. it, you know, that's how I felt. So but by really taking all of the digital stuff out of it and really going all analog on this, that's really calmed that down unbelievably. Yeah. And, of course, it doesn't mean that I don't use um, online calendars at all. Because of course, the way we work together is we, very often, we know we have a, um, a shared calendar. We put things in there in advance because these are important for both of us. So we can, you know, we have, we have a shared calendar mm-hmm. and we schedule things in. Um, but they, those things that we do add on there, they go into my yes, other journal correct. as yeah. well. You know? And so this is really just a way to notify somebody else that you're exactly. working on a particular project, like we would, you know. Um, and uh, in particular, because we have some really interesting guests coming up. For instance, over the next yeah. uh, over the next few weeks, um, and that should be really really exciting. And of course, you know, we're trying to record these podcasts and, and interviews um, at different times, depending on what's convenient for you know for, mm-hmm. for our guests. So it's important that we that we schedule. And it's important that we share that scheduling, and that's really where the technology comes in handy. That's what I, that's what I find. But from there on. It literally, yeah, it just goes into my analog journal, and then, yeah. you know, so, um, then I, I work, I work with it in there. So, you know, I'm glad you find it useful because I, I, I really, I really am, I really, really am, and I, you know, I'm, I, I thank you for introducing it to me because it's not something I'd really picked up on hmm. previously. Um, I'd heard of it, but not really hmm. looked at, at it too much, yeah. and I've even got a favorite pen now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> great, awesome, and it's not a nice, expensive one that I do do own. Mm-hmm. It's a cheap. Cool. Came in a batch of 20 black Bic pens. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, awesome. It Great. just suits me for whatever reason. Great, yeah, if it feels right. You know, <laughs> that's, that's it. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. So, yeah, join us next week for the um, Bullet Journal podcast. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll talk about blue Bic pens. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and red Bic pens. <laughs> wow. That's really all I've got for this week. It is, yeah. Yeah. Sh- should we finish up? Excellent. Love it. Cool. So, we have, once again for the 25th time come to the end of the camera shake podcast uh, and we will be back next week uh, with episode 26 uh, we should have a really interesting guest we won't tell you who it is just yet yeah. but um but it's really something to look forward to um also uh, if you feel so inclined and you're listening to the uh, apple podcast version of this podcast um you know please scroll down and leave us a a star um ranking or you know a star review and uh, write a few words in the review that would really help us out um, it really helps um, make this podcast more discoverable to other people mm-hmm. um, and likewise if you're watching this on youtube um give us a, you know subscribe and leave a comment uh, it's always great to read comments on on youtube videos um and other than that you know get in touch let us know where you are and without further ado we shall see you again next week next time He does drive a damn cool car. It's a very cool car. Yeah. I I don't know if we should say what it is, though. Should we? Should we? Well, we could. (laughs) 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 Should we start that segment again? (laughs) Dead air is a crime. (laughs) 